um, inaugural uh, shareholder and investor update uh, presentation. And uh, thank you for joining. Um, I think we'll we'll get started. I I, I know we don't have a full complement, but I, I presume people will sort of come on board as uh, as they as they do. So uh, I'll just start with a little bit of background about the company. Um, as you know, uh, we are a company listed on the pink sheets of OTC. Um, we're a company that's has been around as a public company since 2018 when we did a reverse merger with Brookman Explorations. Um, the genesis of our business goes back a little further than that. Um, it's a group of investors out of Hong Kong who have spent a total of about uh, 20 to 25 years living in Asia. And um, we had an investment banking business, which was registered with the Securities and Futures Commission in Hong Kong, doing mergers and acquisitions and um, corporate finance, direct investment. We've done uh, a couple of investments prior to um, to the Indonesian gold investment, uh, which um, date back to the late 90s, uh, when we, one of the inaugural investors actually in, in China, we, we took a, we privatized a, um, uh, a um, recycled paperboard company in China, and we listed it and, uh, and very successfully sold it to a Canadian public company about two years later. We also worked in India. Um, we acquired a minority interest in an Indian, um, the fourth largest uh, reseller of computer hardware in India called Iris Computers out of Delhi. And we um, we put it we put a, a structure together and we we ended up selling the company to uh, to an investment group out of Singapore that was headed by a guy called John Scully, who used to run uh, um, <clears throat> uh, a um, very well-known uh, uh, IT company called Apple. <laughs> He, he, he took over the mantle from Steve Jobs uh, and um, ran it for a couple of years. So he then became an investor and he and he uh, he that was a very successful sale for us as well. So um, we knew Indonesia very well. We had very good relationships there, particularly in Sulawesi province. And we knew that uh, that there was a very active gold business there. Uh, Newmont Mining had been operating there for about 20 years and made a lot of money before they went to West Papua in the early 2000s and so we we acquired uh with a with a local partner an investment in in a place called uh, talawan which is close to the regional capital manado and it's uh, it's an existing uh, facility which was about 50 hectares with processing on site and uh when we acquired the business in 2015 it was doing around a million dollars in revenue relatively small and there was a there was a clause in the in the in the operating agreement which required the profit to remain in Indonesia for uh, expansion purposes, etc. And um, and then uh, the business has been very successful. Uh, and last uh, quarter we did about uh, close to four million dollars in revenue and about one point nine million in in profit, uh, and um, uh, which is higher than we expected and has been performing very well over the past two or three years because of a, a very high uh, high ore grade seam, which we've been mining and, and following over the over the top of the property, uh, which has enabled us to, to bump, out our, bump up our um, production um, volumes very considerably. So uh, that's been a successful business for us, or, you know, and, and we've, the, the plan has always been to use Indonesia as a stepping stone to a to to a larger, uh, more global platform, particularly uh, focusing on developed markets, uh, North America, and uh, Australia being two, which are obviously very well established uh, gold areas. Um, and uh, last year we we did our inaugural investment in Canada. Uh, which is a property called the Moose Horn, which is in fact part of the Tintina Gold Belt, which is a very significant gold production belt, which runs uh, from Yukon in Canada through Alaska. And uh, so our uh, Moose Horn uh, project is located in the Yukon side, but very close to Alaska. Um, and uh, it has infrastructure on, on site, and it also has a an NR 43101 um, confirmed resource of around 40,000 ounces and uh, significantly more available, obviously, in the property, um, subject to further uh, 
to further drilling. But um, we, uh, since uh, Moosehorn was acquired, we've also recently entered into an agreement to acquire property in, on the Alaskan side of Tintina, which is slightly smaller, called MacArthur Creek. Now, MacArthur Creek is part of the same gold belt, and it's actually contiguous to the uh, to the Moosehorn property, uh, but it's on the Alaska side, um, so that the, the border, basically the border runs between the two properties. But um, the uh, MacArthur Creek property is uh, very close to production, and uh, the plan is that we, as I announced uh, a week or two ago, uh, that we will be um, uh, channeling some funds into Moosehorn to bring Moosehorn to production, and also uh, the Alaskan side, hopefully by the middle of next year. So we will be starting with Moosehorn um, this month, actually. And uh, the plan is to is to bring out some some bulk samples by the end of the year. Bulk samples being uh, trial production, uh, and uh, we hope to be able to produce our first gold by December. Uh, there is a refinery in Whitehorse, or very close to Whitehorse, which is the largest uh, town close to the property. And so we're we're hoping that we'll be able to ramp up production by the first quarter of next year and and get uh, get some meaningful production and cash flow out of North America. Um, our, our plan has always been that the platform that we're putting together uh, focuses on properties which are, all, are either all already in production or very close to be able to to be brought to production. Uh, and we're we're not in the exploration business. That's not really our um, our uh, DNA. Um, when we put the project together back in 2015, it was very much, um, let's make this a working asset as opposed to a, a, a future future development. Um, and that, um, that DNA runs through all of our decisions. Uh, and I think it, it makes us a little different from other uh, small mining companies, generally who tend to aggregate um, resource properties um, drill, uh, prove up reserves, and then uh, sell it to a, to a larger operator. We're, we're in the in the business of acquiring properties which we can bring to production. Um, in Indonesia, of course, it's a different story. It's a very low production cost because salaries, wages are very low. However, gold is gold, and we sell gold for the same price irrespective of where it's produced. So the operating margins are in Indonesia are, are extremely high. Um, we are negotiating with our operating partner in Monado to be able, starting next year, to be able to bring some of the cash flow back into the company so that we can use it um, to, to boost the operations in the North American side. So that's one question that uh, people have come up with from time to time, which makes sense, and which we are addressing. Um, as far as audit is concerned, we are, um, we are in the final stages of... Uh, completing a three-year audit of the operations of the Indonesian side, um, going back, I guess, uh, 20,000, sorry, 2021, 2020, 2019. So that's three years of, of operating um, statements, which have been uh, reviewed, um, co sorry, compiled and reviewed, the vouchers uploaded to the cloud, and the auditor who is PCA or B qualified um, is currently finalizing his review of the of the cloud data and will be compiling a set of draft accounts. So we're hoping by the end of this month, um, it may drag on into, into September, but um, as is always the case, we obviously were delayed with the audit because of uh, COVID. Um, considerable delay because uh, Indonesia closed its borders for, for two years, as did Australia. Um, so we weren't able to move anything around during that time, but we're, we're making up for it now. So we're conscious that it's very important for us to get this audit completed as soon as possible. Indonesia, of course, has always would always be more complicated because it's been operating for several years. It's in a developing market. Uh, um, and But the, the US and, and Canadian assets have very easily auditable operations because they're, they haven't been producing... Um, since we acquired them, at least um, when we when we bought the properties, um, they had produced in the past, but they weren't producing when we acquired them. So it's a very simple audit process. So um, uh, I'm confident that we can get 
audits done on those two properties um, relatively quickly and hopefully by the first half of next year. But certainly the Indonesian audit will be completed relatively soon. Um, so the plan is to is to keep to keep acquiring. We have another property in Alaska which we have our our um, our, our our finger on, and we will be hopefully announcing uh, a definitive agreement on the Alaskan transaction uh, that we talked about a couple of weeks ago in preliminary stages. Uh, we should have definitive agreement fairly shortly. And following that, we'll be working on the another smaller property in Alaska. This is part of our process of expanding the North American platform um, in an efficient ma- way that, that can bring cash flow from the business as quickly as possible. Um, so I think that's pretty much the history in a, in a nutshell. And uh, I would like to turn over to questions. And I see one. How long after the PCA of the audit is completed would you expect to uplist to a NASDAQ or New York Stock Exchange? That's an excellent question. Um, as soon as the audit is completed, we will be preparing an S1 registration statement. Um, as some of you will know, we filed uh, Reg A, which is uh, um, a short form registration to raise um, funds. We had a $3 million limit on the fundraising. To date, we've raised about uh, uh, 250,000, which represents about 2 million shares. Um, we don't intend to raise a significant uh, significantly more under the Reg A because, because the audit is so close that our strategy would be to simply replace the outstanding Reg A registration with an S1, which would then um, incorporate the audited financial statements. That S1 would then be used as a um, platform to apply most probably to the New York Stock Exchange second board, which was formerly the Amex. Um, because it's a specialist exchange and I'm I'm more comfortable working with that type of exchange. But in any event, uh, we would be filing uh, um, as soon as possible after the audit's completed and we finish the S1, we'll be filing uh, to uplist. So I, I couldn't I couldn't give you a date on that, but uh, uh, we would be it's our priority, certainly. I, I hope that answers the uh, question. Yes. Oh, um, there was one question on uh, a cease trading order, which was, um, I think, from the British Columbia Securities Commission, as I recall. Um, The company was, in fact, uh, run or controlled by a group of management operating out of Canada. uh, And uh, before we bought it back in uh, before 2018. And what As I understand it, what happened was that um, the company was issuing a couple of press releases. uh, And as it's listed in the United States, they used a New York-based attorney to review the press releases. And the New York-based attorney approved the press releases. And But apparently, the British Columbia Securities Commission decided that they didn't like the fact that uh, the the management was based in Canada and that the U.S. attorney was the only approving authority for the press release. And they promptly turned around and said, this is a problem and they issued a cease trading order. This was way back before uh, we acquired the company. I think this was back in the early 2000s. Um, uh, so, you know, this was um, something that that was a, a disputable action by the BC Securities Commission in any event. Uh, and however, since there's been a complete change of um, management, complete change of ownership, and a complete change of business in the company since then, uh, it's it's pretty irrelevant. So we are working with attorney attorney in Vancouver right now to try and and get that well to to, to get that CTO removed as quickly as possible. It's a it's a bureaucratic process, un- unfortunately, um, but. Nevertheless, um, it's something that we're conscious of and we'll be, uh, we are going through that process at the moment. 
Um, I just have a question. I'll repeat the question. Obviously, your share structure is very good and attractive right now, though we saw it increasing the last few weeks, the outstanding, the flow went up lately. Can we expect more of that in the next few weeks, or will it stay kind of where it is now until we get to the $1 approved? Stock seems very undervalued. Yes. Well, uh, the question is uh, dilution, I presume. Um, and uh, there, there has, uh, there have been some issuances. Obviously, we issued two million shares at twelve cents for the for the Reg A, which was uh, much earlier in the year, back in I think February March. And there have been some issuances, I think, uh, from conversion. We we have a a very close relationship with a an investment bank in New York called Leonite Capital. And they're, they're our only investment banker, actually. And uh, Lee and I, you know, work with us. We we have we had a convertible note from them, and they have they have converted uh, actually most of that note now. Um, and uh, we, uh, I think that that would account for what you saw as the increase in issued shares or issued an outstanding over the last uh, month or so. Uh, but that mostly has been has been divested. Um, so I think you'll find that the that the dilution um, you know will be will be stable in in terms of our outstanding shares for the next uh, month or two. I wouldn't be too concerned about dilution from that perspective. So uh, I, I think that when we we haven't really been promoting or um, uh, using a, a particularly aggressive investor relations platform up till now. We've been pretty much putting everything together to make sure that the business is in a, is in a state that we can be, have an effective investor relations platform and that we have, um, we have something that investors can really understand and, and sign off on. And I think we're there right now. And we are working with SRAX, um, obviously, and uh, we believe that they will be a valuable contributor to the to the understanding the market has of what we do. I think one of the problems with Brookmount has been no one really knows much about the company and what we what we do. And I think the understanding that we are not just a, a junior miner in the exploration business, but we are actually producing and our and our, our DNA from the beginning has been that we will uh, either require a, a producing mine or we will acquire a property that can be brought to production quickly. And we have the we have the capability of doing that. We don't have to farm it out to somebody else. We don't have to sell it off to a bigger, to a a, a larger entity. Um, having said that, of course, we, we, we have, uh, got some discussions underway for private equity capital, um, from, uh, from strategic investors to look at, uh, helping with, uh, funding or accelerating the development of our North American assets. And, um, that is something that we would, we would be working with, um, clearly but right now we're not issuing shares at this level it makes no sense if if people understood our fundamentals financially i i think they would scratch their head and look at what the stock price is at the moment and i think one of those issues is the function of the market and and two it's a function of people not really knowing what we are so uh this what, what what i'm doing at the moment is 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 the process that we're starting to Try and get an understanding uh, of that that the market could could know what we are and what what our what our approach and what our strategy is, and particularly um, to increase the um, the valuation that they place on the company and uh, make our price earnings ratio uh, more commercial because right now it's not. Um, so that's that's the strategy there. I, I I hope that answers the question. But uh, <clears throat> I know that dilution has been an issue and um, it's been raised. But I I'm not concerned, and I know that uh, that we 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 have a good handle on where shares are and um, 
and we are we have no intention of of issuing shares at this at this price level it would make no sense to anybody um because it doesn't reflect the value of the company um are there any more questions Oh, uh, RS would be, would that be a reduction, um, a reduction in authorized capital? Could you, could you clarify that? RS, I'm not familiar with that. If you want to dial in, you can press star nine to raise your hand to to uh, to um, table the question, and star six to unmute. If Stone Chains at Yahoo could just clarify um, an RS, I'd be able to address the question because I'm not quite sure what the abbreviation is for. relative strength just the host stepping in here it looks like uh his question uh, the R abbreviation rs stands for reverse split oh reverse split yes i'm sorry i'm sorry okay yes then no there is no plan for a reverse split that's correct absolutely not because in fact we did a reverse split um last year uh 2020 i believe and uh because we had moved from pretty well a uh, uh, sub sub penny uh, stock price and we had um several hundred million shares an issue over a billion actually so we did a hundred for one reverse split uh, in about july 2020 and that brought the issue to not standing down to a level which uh, which made the float small um and in fact even after issuances following that we're still at about 30 odd million which is still a very small uh, issued an outstanding, and the the public float of about five or six is also very small. So no, there, the the answer to that would be, I would confirm there is no plan for reverse split. Uh, the opposite may be the may be the truth. However, if uh, um, a forward split may well be the way to to get uh, to get a bonus issue to shareholders and and um, to to increase the float, which would give us more liquidity. In preparation for listing on an exchange however uh I, I wouldn't envisage doing a forward split at the current price so um we we're, we're sensible in our approach to um to capital and uh we will wait until the right time and we will also there was one other question i think that was raised um not through this forum but previously about the uh, the authorized capital um and it's a good question because the uh the point was made that our authorized is around 2 billion shares which actually is a is is a hangover from the from the time pre reverse split in 2020 uh so we uh, we we haven't actually yet ex gone through that process but we will uh, go through the process to re to reduce the authorized capital probably to 100 or 200 million because we have no plan to have any more shares than that um given that what we expect to happen to the to the stock price moving forward so that's a sensible suggestion do we have any other questions I, I hope I haven't been efficient enough to actually answer all the questions. But uh, if, if if you do if you do have any other questions, this is the first of many uh, presentations uh, in this format, and also in a broader format where we'll have audio visual, I guess, uh, in a week or two. But for the time being, uh, I just wanted to uh, say that um, 
you know uh, most of our most of our information now is released we we have an active social media program um and we uh certainly will be continuing with these forums um that we can interact with our shareholders um because i i like to be able to you know to answer questions and address issues because i know it's a you know we we need our information out there and uh i i think by asking questions it 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 activates um our um our responses and um hopefully it makes you comfortable that we that we're moving in the right direction and i i believe we are and uh, i think that we have we have a good team uh that's able to do that aaron kimball joined us um with the Musorn acquisition i know aaron should be online somewhere but uh he's um our executive director of north america and he's handling the the uh expansion program there uh and he's also ex very experienced at um you know on coal face mining if you will and so he's he's very important for us and um you know we will be he's putting together a team that can you know take us to the next level um in our north american business and uh that's where we intend to go so i'm very happy that we were able to to speak uh this morning and i'm hoping that uh, you can join us you can join us again uh for uh future opportunities uh and it's very important for us to understand what the investor community is thinking so that we can we can feedback and uh and develop a relationship where you're free to ask any questions and we'll we'll address them as best we can certainly because we 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 value um support that you're giving us and um we'd like to be able to return the favor with uh with a you know a, a strong stock price and the way to do that is to is to get our information out because I, I think we have a very good story and I think we have a fundamentally excellent business and I think the plan that we've developed is early stage but I think it's going to be very uh, successful uh if if you look at our history as investors we've done fairly well in the past in difficult circumstances in some cases uh just as a matter of interest historical interest the the city that we we're working in in China with our um, Wuhan Dongfeng was in Wuhan, uh, which is obviously quite a famous town these days. Um, but you know, so yes, it's we have succeeded in difficult circumstances, and I I think we can we can do an excellent job with Brookmount. So, and we appreciate your support. And we'll have press releases we'll have social media and a, a continuous stream of information and um forums such as this where you can you know we can talk directly you can ask questions we can answer questions and uh, and and obviously anytime email to the company uh on individual issues and we'll be obviously happy to respond and keep you up to date with where we are I'll just give you one uh, last chance. Anyone would like to raise any more questions, um, or we can we can let you go <laughs> and uh, and uh, look forward to seeing you or hearing you uh, in our in our next uh, presentation. Okay, so I think that that we can wrap it up for today. Thank you very much for joining us. Um, I, I hope that we, you know, we've ans answered questions that you had adequately. And uh, as I said, if you have anything else you want to ask us, please um, email the company directly anytime or call. And uh, we will be back uh, in this forum and other forums um, on a regular basis. Uh, hopefully we can get to know each other and uh obviously we'll have information going out through um through social media as well is there 
Well, I, I'm sorry. Actually, there are a couple more questions just 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 came in. Uh, no, there is no reverse split. I'm, I'm sorry. What 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 he means is if there is any reverse split in plan. No, I mean just to clarify, uh, that's a question we just addressed, and and no, there is no plan for a reverse split. Absolutely. Um, reducing the authorized capital uh is something that we 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 haven't prioritized actually because we've had a, a lot of other things we've been doing but now uh we are um because um i i think i i take the point um and you know th there is no way that that we we need two billion shares to be authorized so uh we will reduce it probably to 100 or maybe 200 million max uh and that 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 process um will be will be underway. I think I think that's it. So um I guess we'll we'll close it up. Alexa. Sounds good. Thank you everyone for joining. Thank you so much. Talk to you again very soon.